Okay, uh, I'm going to talk on uh, boredom and relationships. So, the first thing to know about I mean, there's, as you as you go through the spiritual work or go through a course of miracles, you're releasing layers of the ego. So, as you release the layers of the ego, uh, at certain points, it's like revealed higher levels of consciousness. Now, what one is doing as one is letting go of attachments and identifications with the world is that um, while there's still an ego, there's filtering of experience through the ego's filters. So there are different levels of consciousness and you're bringing up various dualities or pos positionalities of the ego through which you, you um, perceive what seems to be uh, reality uh, or ego perception. Now, as you do each lesson, or as you keep doing the spiritual work, what's happening is that those uh, preconceived filters or beliefs or ideas from the ego uh, eventually come up. And it depends on how strongly ingrained or identified those ideas are. Now, in terms of romantic relationships or any type of relationship, you know, there is this thing, I would say, from my own experience, of this thing of like, oh, you're going to be feeling this feeling of madly in love, or this uh, feeling of union, or whatever it is, unity, that many of the Hollywood movies uh, sort of connotate, you know, oh, I feel so in love, sort of thing. But um, the, um, if you like, while you're doing the spiritual work, like The Course in Miracles, you're gradually chopping off all those identifications like uh, a relationship, even a romantic relationship or any relationship, it's, 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 it's um, imbued with specialness. You know, the ego has, if you say there's is my relationship with my parents, my relationship with my romantic partner, my relationship with my work colleague, they're all so-called special and they have a, a lot of beliefs and attachments associated and so they filter through the ego. Now the ego loves um, loves uh, duality, ups and downs. So it's like I'm feeling I'm feeling madly in love, or now I'm feeling really angry. So you get these positionalities, and those are the belief systems that have been filtered. Automatically, when you're doing spiritual work, it's like the next belief systems come into alignment for for um, for the chopping block. Basically, it's like, are you willing to chop? and let go of these uh, ideas, belief systems, positionalities. And the ego then, and then you get to face what's coming up from the ego, where the ego wants you to hold on to the various payoffs and not let go of things, so you can carry on perceiving through those filters. So the ego will always um, um, strongly try and make you stay stuck and not give up those so you can go to the next level. So they're ch often cherished uh, positionalities. Now, one of the one of the common things there's a few common things I hear from spiritual students. One is boredom. The other, recently, is curiosity. But they're still both ego uh, ego emotions. So boredom boredom is like the ego has to live on 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 a roller coaster, an up and down kind of thing. It doesn't want because if there was if there was nothing for the ego to do in a relationship, that would signify the death of the ego. Like it can't uh, so for example, what's the opposite of boredom? Bo bo the opposite of boredom is it, it could mean different things. Maybe to the ego, because it's a positionality, it's a duality. It's a, it's, if you've got boredom, then there has to be the other thing. The other side of boredom might be love or intensity or something like that. So the ego, boredom is actually a really, really positive sign that the ego is being challenged. Because the ego, in order to exist, needs to carry on the up and down, the duality, the positionality. So if there's a boredom, then there must be an excitement. So there's a, something for the ego to do. If there was no ego there in the relationship, then there'd be like an open window to the infinite. So boredom is actually like your, the, the ego is actually trying to hold on to dominion and says like, okay, this is boredom, you know, let's get some drama in here and say like, uh, you know, I'm bored of you, I'm gonna leave you or, uh, I'm bored, you've got to change, or whatever it is. 
so the, the, so this is the idea of causality or control of force. You see, the ego is saying you've now got this feeling, couldn't do any spiritual work, that you're bored. So the sick, it now has a job to do because it's got belief systems. It needs to control the situation, change the situation, or force the situation to escape the boredom. Now, if you allow the boredom, which is what the ego doesn't want you to do, or you witness the boredom, or you use the Course in Miracles lessons, I pray for a miracle to see my feeling of boredom differently, or uh, my, bo my boredom thoughts are attack thoughts, I'm willing to let them go, or, um, you know, so you can see boredom can be like a feeling, but that, that's being observed, or it can be an underlying thought. Like this person, there's no excitement in this relationship. It just seems to be nice and neutral. So that again is another object, another thing. So when you uh, allow that, or use the Course in Miracles uh, to, to, to change that, or to ask the Holy Spirit to intervene, to remove that, then what happens is eventually that feeling of boredom and the beliefs of boredom eventually get dissolved. But it's a, it's a period of testing. It's like the ego wants you to go down and get into boredom and then drama and create a lot of drama around it. Like, the problem's you, you're boring, uh, you've got to change, or I'm going to get angry, or so whatever it is. Or, but it doesn't want you to release the boredom. And then, you know, so the ego will fight for a while with a lot of thoughts and belief systems and feelings. And you used to use the observer, the Course in Miracles, or any other spiritual tool. And eventually, at a certain point, it's like the ego gives up. And you release that, and then you go on to the next level of consciousness, where that those filters which are being tested at the moment get dissolved. And some, you know, like the ego will go, well, I'm doing this. Might say things like, I'm doing the spiritual work. I've been bored for three days, so I'm going to control the situation. But you still got to, if you're doing the course of miracles, carry on doing the course of miracles. And let the Holy Spirit cut the boredom out, because there, it's like in the. In, but here's the thing with spiritual seekers: there's different layers. There's a thing of, um, even when you get to the infinite, there can be infinite peace, infinite love, uh, infinite bliss. So what's, what's, um, what's holding on to the different levels going up is that there's still different filters that need to be transcended and work through, and you work through them in divine order. Uh, so in terms of romantic relationship, if I got boredom, well the thing is, in, in truth, there is no duality. In truth, there is no this and that. And in truth, there is no such thing as boredom or time or uh, you're not good enough because you're making me feel bored. I need something else. That doesn't exist. So what that is, is just filters. And they're just filters and belief systems and dualistic perceptions which are cut because what's here is always here. You don't have to like change a person or change the weather or change of, I mean, you know, it's always here. So the problem is not that. And usually, um, uh, with something like boredom, it's often, I mean, it depends what the lesson the boredom is bringing up. One of the lessons could be with boredom, for me, usually it would be like my ego wants and up and down, like to have some excitement and drama to get stimulated so you can start thinking and controlling things. Because that's the drug, you know, the adrenaline up and down. It doesn't like just just uh, getting to these deeper layers of, of experiencing that inner love and that inner oneness, uh, which is irrelevant, so that the externals are totally irrelevant to that inner sense of well being. So I just say, like the boredom, like I can observe the boredom, I can pray for a miracle to see it differently. The boredom's not, the situation is not boring, it's my ego is creating the perception of boredom, and there's nothing wrong with the situation. There's nothing wrong with any situation. So the presence is always here, it's not, not so I need to, uh, so it could be that, the, you know, one of them, like the boredom, is just to let the boredom be there, because if you allow the boredom to be there for however long it's going to be there, it's like you're starving the ego, like the ego is going, do something, do something to create drama. And if you just allow it, eventually you run out of the boredom and then you go on to the next level. It's like, it's like the spirit won and the ego lost. Because the ego wants to create more drama uh, and, and you resisted that. And then eventually there's a miracle and it's just released and then the next lesson comes up. 
or uh, could observe it. So let, let's say uh, I'm with someone and I'm finding them boring. Well, that's my ego finding them boring. So I could say like, okay, uh, boring, boredom is a feeling that comes and goes. Okay, what's observing the boredom? And is the observer of the boredom bored? Oh, no, it's not. The observer of the boredom, that's a bore, boredom is just an object arising from the ego to try and make you do something and activate the ego into more drama. So you then start to see that that's an illusion because there isn't such a thing as uh, I mean, boredom isn't real. Or it could be there's certain lessons coming up with beliefs um, like I think a partner should do exciting things regularly otherwise they're not, they don't love me, whatever it is, is kind of, you haven't done anything interesting for me for a few weeks, I'm feeling really bored, unless you change, I'm going to get rid of you. So then that belief system, so if I buy the belief system from the ego, then they've got to change, rather than for me, pray for a miracle and let that belief system go. So then what happens is, um, the miraculous unfolds the situation rather than my ego tries to change the situation so that it can carry on its existence. So I would just be trying to, uh, it doesn't mean sometimes it can be a different situation, but that's how it's it. It's like, there is no such thing as a boring situation. I mean, boredom is just, a, it's, it's just a, it's either a thought or a feeling that's arising. So I can easily use the course. Uh, and there's a good thing, I think life often forces you into situations where you can't escape. Uh, so you might have boredom for a few weeks with a partner and it's like you can't just easily just cut them off. But it's like you're choosing the spiritual way of just letting it go as opposed to using the ego mechanisms to let it go. So usual things would be like a boredom, like the external situation is going to change or going to control something. So if you transcend it, you know, either the feelings are going to burn off and if you let the feelings burn off, quite often then the boredom, once the boredom is gone, then there will be a different level of consciousness in the relationship. And you've got to understand that when, you, when your level of consciousness increases, the relationship will automatically increase, will change as well. But that's miraculous, miraculous change as opposed to the ego saying, I feel bored, I'm going to control you to change, which is not miraculous change. That would, be, that would create even more darkness. Uh, in the situation.